Hello everyone, I'm going to be talking about my experience during my week going through brachytherapy and I'll be focusing on high dose rate brachytherapy as I um, got to experience the most in this area. So some objectives um, that you can take away from this presentation is that you'll be able to recognize times when high dose rate brachytherapy is commonly utilized for treatment. You will be able to speak to the interprofessional collaboration involved in high dose rate brachytherapy treatment planning and delivery and you'll be able to relate HDR procedures to a patient case. So I'll talk a little bit about what brachytherapy what HDR brachytherapy is. So first of all, brachytherapy refers to a method of delivering radiation by short distance. It uses a live radioactive source to deliver dose to tissue. Brachytherapy is very advantageous for patients for a couple of reasons. So first, oftentimes it's a quick procedure. Instead of coming for 30 um, external beam appointments, it's often done in three to five brachytherapy appointments. Um, and as well, there can be um, expected to have minimal damage to surrounding tissues due to sharp dose fall of distributions, and this will help the patient have less side effects. So HDR, as I already mentioned, refers to high dose rate. Oftentimes, a 10 kiri source is used at the CCI. Um, they are licensed to hold up to a 12 kiri um, source in strength, but typically, they receive a 10 carry source at its highest um, radioactivity. Uh, Iridium-192 is the active source utilized for the HDR treatments. The half-life of this is 73.8 days, and this source is changed at the CCI every three months to keep the activity strong and the treatment time short. So when is HDR typically utilized? HDR brachytherapy is often used for early stage endometrium cancer patients. The current mainstay of treatment for early stage endometrial cancer is a total abdominal hysterectomy and a bilateral sulpingo-oophorectomy. The HDR can then be given to further decrease the risk of local regional recurrence. Um, one study stated that the vagina was the most common location of recurrence. Um, so they suggested that vaginal vault brachytherapy rather than external beam radiation therapy is a good option for many patients to decrease this risk of recurrence and the potential need for salvage therapy later on. They were also saying that it's brachytherapy is better for more patients in the early stages because it will give them less side effects and they have to come for less treatments. Um, other common uses for high dose rate brachytherapy include using it as a boost after external beam radiation therapy. The patient case I observed this week was unique in that HDR was being utilized for local recurrence that had occurred in the vagina and it, this was being used in a palliative setting as the um, patient not only had recurrence in the vagina but also had abdominal um, subcutaneous recurrence. So yeah, like I said, my patient's case is quite unique. I got to know this patient very well over the week as I saw her all five days I was in brachytherapy. So this patient, I'll talk about her a little bit more. So she was an 82 year old female. She spoke limited English. She was Vietnamese descent and her daughter came with her every day to help her get into the room and help uh, translate for us. Uh, she does have 12 children, um, with all were spontaneous vaginal deliveries, and she had no previous abnormal pap smears, and she'd never been on hormone replacement, replacement therapy. The patient is very active. She lives with her son, one of her sons, and she has no significant medical history other than her diagnosis of endometrial cancer. Um, she did present with postmenopausal bleeding and thickened endometrial lining, which caused the doctors to do further investigations to find out um, more. Uh, so they did urinary cytology, which showed atypical urethral urocelial cells, and they also did an endometrial biopsy, which showed grade 1 endometrioid and dental carcinoma. 
there was no metastatic or no disease evident at the time of staging. Um, and the patient was fairly hesitant to go ahead with any treatment, but in the end, the patient did go ahead and get surgery done December 2017. This surgery was a total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral sulpingo-oophorectomy, which I already discussed previously, is the current standard of care for endometrial cancer in its early stages. So after the surgery, the final stage of this patient's cancer was PT2NX with cervical stromal invasion, outer half myometrial invasion, and lymphovascular invasion. So after the surgery, the patient went home and actually did not want to proceed with any other treatments. Uh, she was fine with just having the surgery and going home to heal. About a month and a half after her surgery, um, in late January to mid-February, this patient was admitted to the Royal Alec Hospital for Eurosepsis. This patient was very sick with infections, um, and she was in the hospital for about half a month, and then when she was released, she went home again, and now she's back in March 2017. She was having intermittent bleeding and swelling in her right lower quadrant of her abdomen, um, Investigations of this were done and it revealed a palpable subcutaneous lesion. And a pelvic exam at this time showed a fragile vaginal nodule thought to be recurrence of the endometrial cancer. Um, so a biopsy was then done, which confirmed this nodule as um, recurrence of the endometrial cancer. So things for this patient went fairly quickly. As you can see, she only had her surgery in December, and then she got sick in January and was back with recurrence um, in mid-March. Um, so this, uh, this cancer is thought to be quite aggressive. So she came for her um, first day of treatment, um, her HDR brachytherapy, as she'd already been had a consultation with the radiation oncologist um, and the biopsy was done to confirm the recurrence, and the radiation oncologist suggested that HGR brachytherapy would be um, the most optimal treatment for this patient at this time, as she did not want to come for a long course of external beam radiation therapy, and this is now a more palliative setting and thought to be aggressive, but it is just one nodule um, in the vaginal vault that we are going that they were going to treat. So this was the best treatment for this patient. So when she came for her first day of treatment, um, the radiation therapist got the patient changed, ID'd the patient and did education for the patient and also included the patient's family in the procedure as this patient did speak limited English. In addition to this, the radiation therapist also prepared the room for the procedure and they did deliver the treatment on the first day as they do every day. The radiation oncologist also came to the brachytherapy room and performed a pelvic exam um, to ensure that this nodule has not increased in size or spread elsewhere, and she did confirm that um, it was just a small vaginal nodule, still very localized, um, so she was okay to go ahead with the brachytherapy treatment. Um, so she decided upon the size of the applicator. In this patient's case, she decided on a three centimeter applicator and she also chose the dose and fit the applicator in the vaginal vault for this first day. This particular patient, due to the palliative nature, there was also discussion about possible um, external beam radiation for the subcutaneous abdominal recurrences, and they also had a lengthy discussion with the patient and the family about end of life and supportive care for this patient, which I got to witness. Um, the last member of the team that was there for the first day of treatment was the medical physicist. So based on the radiation oncologist plan aspects, comp they completed the treatment plan and imported it to the computer. A second check of the plan was done by the radiation oncologist as well as the BRACI team ensured that the proper plan was imported and ready to treat. So my patient's treatment, um, since the lesion was small at the time of recurrence, 
and the rapid recurrence suggested aggressive disease, hydrostrate brachytherapy was offered for this patient. The radiation oncologist prescribed 3,400 centigrade in five fractions, which is a fairly typical dose, and the dose was prescribed to a depth of 0.5 centimeters, which is not so typical of the HDR brachytherapy as often it's prescribed to the surface of the applicator, but um, this depth was achievable. So after the treatment plan was made and imported, the patient was set up for treatment with the applicator in place. The remote afterloader was then hooked up and everything was ready for treatment to begin. Once everyone has left the room, the treatment was then started and this patient's particular treatment was approximately 12 minutes since the source was decayed to about half its um, activity level at 4.777 Curie. So once this treatment was delivered, the applicator was removed and the patient was completed for the day. And this was a similar repetitive process for the, each of the five days of treatment. So some of the equipment used, as, as I said, this is the remote afterloader. Um, the source is hooked up to here. First, a dummy source is run through to ensure there's no obstructions. And then the real source is put through and runs through into the applicator. This is the applicator that's used. Um, different diameters can be chosen for different patients and also different lengths of the applicator can be chosen to fit um, the patient that we are treating. Um, this is kind of just a brief kind of schematic of the treatment plan. So the source runs in the middle of the applicator. We were treating to a depth of 0 0.5 centimeters. So at the surface, the dose was very hot and at the five centimeters was where they got the prescribed dose. Each of these positions are called dwell positions and the source remains in each position for a certain amount of time based on the radiation oncologist treatment plan. Um, so some side effects and follow up um, for this patient and for high dose rate brachytherapy in general. So side effects for this treatment are minimal when compared to a radical course of external beam radiation therapy. Some of them include vaginal dryness, vaginal stenosis, stenosis, bleeding or spotting while on treatment, vaginal discharge, fatigue, diarrhea, and slight urinary changes. Follow-up for high dose rate brachytherapy is usually three months after the treatment has been delivered. For my patient's case being palliative in nature, the RO is actually not following up. Rather, the patient was given the RO's contact information and suggested um, to follow up with her family doctor. So radiation safety is a big um, consideration in the brachytherapy area. So there is morning quality assurance checks that are done every morning. So they check all the emergency stops, they ensure everything's working properly, and ensure that the dummy source um, finds no obstructions. Um, they also ensure all the interlocks are working, such as the last person out button and the beam on lights. During treatment, um, the patient is always watched through the cameras, and the proper plan is always imported. Second check calculations are done by both the medical physicist physicists and the radiation therapist to ensure the source to get decay and the time of treatment makes sense. After treatment, a Geiger meter is used to ensure the source has retracted fully into the remote afterloader. So the interdisciplinary collaboration in the brachy area of, um, as I've kind of mentioned before, the brachy team consists of radiation therapists, radiation oncologists, medical physicists, um, those are the three main people for the high dose rate brachytherapy. Also, there has been nursing and other supportive care resources for my patient because she was palliative. Um, so in my week, I got to experience a lot of interprofessional collaboration between the review nurses, the RO, radiation therapists, operating room nurses, anesthesiologists, and medical physicists. All of... Um, the positive experience has shown how each person plays a significant role in a patient's brachytherapy treatment journey. All right, thanks for watching my video. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, post them to the forum on eClass. Thanks.